cruising down a back road Trying to let my soul take flight Time, time will tell If I'm ever gonna learn to live right Preacher man tells me Seeking you will find Well the Lord God Almighty Ain't gonna let me in No, no, not tonight Hey, I've been running like Forrest Gump But not through Frank Ocean's mind My future's out if I don't leave this life behind You think I got it all Get a bleed little penny from show to show When this New York Jet Rex Ryan your coach <laughs> Look, many think I'm Superman All my music's ever sent But look under this cape Find out these angel wings are clear Play for Minerville A city under fire Signed a not so incredible huh? Derek Ryder <laughs> What's up, future citizens of Minerville? It's your boy Derek Miner out here on this beautiful night in Middle Tennessee. I'm stupid excited to let y'all get this album. From all the people that I've let here, they've said it's been my best work to date. So I'm hoping that on September 10th when you download it or you go to your local bookstore that you'll love it. You've heard the singles. You've seen the artwork. Shout out to Invisible Creature for killing the game on the artwork. You've seen the videos, albums right around the corner. And I really just want to take this time to just really tell you, kind of give you a, a synopsis of what it's about. Imagine I took you to a city that there's no crying, there's no arguing, there's no fighting. Everybody's happy. Everyone's excited. Everyone is living the life that they want to live. Well, Minerville is not about that city. But usually that's kind of how we put ourselves out there when we're talking to people. Like a lot of times we want to go out and say, hi, I'm Derek Miner, successful rapper, blah, 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 blah. We always just give the best parts of our, of our life usually. But when we connect with people, normally you start to see like, ah, oh, man, well maybe there's also other parts to this person's life. So with the Minerville album, what I want to do is I want it to be like a city. It's like you got the great parts of the city, like Nashville, I take you to the Grand Ole Opry, I take you on 2nd Street, you hear all these great musicians. But then, if I was to let you stay a little bit longer, you would start to see that, you know, our cities, they have layers and they have levels to them. I want this album to have layers and levels. I wanted you to celebrate with me. I wanted you to cry with me. I wanted you to be angry with me about stuff. I wanted you to laugh with me. It's very diverse, not just content-wise, but also sonically. Sonically, what I did with this album was the things that you loved about dying to live, I scrapped away all of the stuff that we hated, that I personally hated about it, and I uploaded a better version of so you're gonna get more of that organic feel you're gonna get more of that passion that everybody knows me for as an artist Derek Miner so I think I have three goals the main goal is is I wanted to give you life through the worldview of the gospel I feel like it's just as valuable for a person to talk about how to raise their son or talk about how to, uh, I don't know, love on their wife through the lens of the gospel because we need that. I learned a lot of stuff from records. And my prayer is that the people that listen to this album, as they listen to the record, they're gonna say, man, I need to love my wife like Christ loved the church. Or man, I wanna raise my kid and I wanna be a father that's there for my child. I wanna see people that feel like they're unashamed to go preach Jesus. Like, I wanted a versatile album. I want to bring you into my world and since Jesus is the biggest piece of my world, there's no way that that was gonna be left off the album. I wanted to stretch, stretch my music content-wise as far as, like, there's a lot of topics that kind of, I think, become dead horses. Uh, and what I want to do is approach different topics from different angles. And I also wanted to maybe say things that that may be taboo, or not even taboo, but maybe that we don't think to talk about. Like, the goal is not to make a controversial album, but just to make an album that's real and it connects with everyday people. And that's Christian, non-Christian, that's everybody. I wanted to be able to, 
to be able to find a common ground and say, let's come to the table and let's let's talk about it. So this is really my conversational piece. Also, sonically, I wanted to stretch the music. You could be putting out the same album over and over again, or you know, look at trends and see what's happening in the, in, in, in the world and say, okay, well, I'm, I need to make a my radio hit. I need to make my CCM hit. I need to make my uh, urban radio hit. I need to make my banger for shows. Really, with this album, I really just wanted to just make good music and just make us an album. And if the radio picks it up, so be it. Uh, and the crazy thing is, since I've done that, I think this has been the best response as far as promotion-wise to any record that I've ever put out. So it's a very organic, real, authentic, honest record. Minerville, September 10th. Mess with me, Derek Miner. First of all, it was really easy for us to produce because you came to the table with pretty much most of the album in little shells, so we just kind of built upon what you had already done. Yeah. So, I mean, I know a lot of people don't know that you're you're a, a decent producer, but uh, <laughs> no, you're you're a really good producer. So so. So you came to the table with with a great start, so it was easy for us to come in and kind of jump on what you'd already done. Yeah. I, what I loved about it was, like, I know this is, like, the trend now, but, like, I'm not a beat maker, I'm a producer. Mm -hmm. Like, I loved how we were, like, trying to make songs. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. songs, not just bought, like, loop, four bar loop beats, mm -hmm. but, like, it just, it's like a... It's like a roller coaster. It's like a ride through. And I think we accomplished what you were trying to do with your album. Is like we're driving through Miami. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So exactly. we're driving by different parts of the city and hearing it. Yeah. And so it's like we were trying to uh, paint uh, with the audio what you wanted to see with the visually. Yeah. Driving through the city. Yeah. So. And it, it wasn't a situation where we were in a different city making beats and emailing them yeah. right. and then you getting beats and then writing to them it was more you, you had some ideas we all came together in the same room yeah. and just vibed out and I think that's why it's such a special project yeah so I, when I first sat down and was thinking of, of, of creating an album I feel like especially in today's world like technology is dope because it allows us to do so much more like I mean Pro Tools you get all these tracks of logic, you get like unlimited tracks mm -hmm. and you can do so much with it, but I think it's made us lazy. You know, a lot of yeah. guys, they never even see producers. Yeah. And, and not to say that that's a bad way to produce music, but I, I know for me, I get energy when I'm in the studio with guys. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had it in my mind when I was when I was making records. And it was funny because I know when uh, Torrance, the a &R, Street Symphony, I mean, when I first came to the table, I had like all these sketches and he was listening like, uh, cause I'm like, I was just in the studio making stuff and I was started off and then I'm like, okay, I know Joseph and Dirty, they gonna do this to it. So I'm not even gonna worry about it. And then I'd be like, oh, Heat Academy would kill the drums on this. So I would just make sketch after sketch after sketch after sketch. But the magic happened when we got in the studio. Yeah. Cause I mean, we literally would be like, I would start working on the beat and then Joseph would get on there and work on it for about an hour, and then Dirty would get on there and work on it for an hour, and then, mm -hmm. you know, Dirty would do a lot of stuff, and then Joseph would tell him that it sucks, and he'd just strip it away. Pretty much, I was the, the coffee man. I, I got coffee and snacks for everybody. Not true, so. not true. But, uh, yeah, my favorite, one of my favorite moments was when the three of us were at one keyboard, keyboard for the chorus of... Uh, Hot air balloon. And three three dudes working on one synth. No, I should go like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have six hands on one Oh, keyboard. yes. Uh, and I'm smacking each other's hands out the way, like, oh, do it like this. No, I think that's what made it so yeah. dope is because you hear a little piece of each of us yeah. in that in that one synth. Yeah. 
I think that's really cool. But it was it was just hard work, man. But I I think that if I was to say what would make the album any different would be I think that's the the thing is that we all sat down. And it was like, yo, we're not leaving until this is amazing. And then we were honest with one another. Like, mm-hmm. if like if I brought something to the table and it was garbage, like there was no feelings. It was about just the music. Yeah. Yeah. Just making the music good. Like I didn't have to get my little parts in. Like even on some songs, I might have just put a hi-hat in there and then on other songs, Joseph might have took a lot of the lead, but we all would just be in the it's just about the music. It's not like all right, well, I gotta make sure I get get my little five little instruments in there so we can be mm-hmm. evenly split. You I think know? what you said about us being honest was really important. I, yeah. I remember on Hot Air Balloon, I added a, a techno part at the end. <laughs> and I was, I, I fought for that techno part. <laughs> <laughs> but these guys, you know, they, they shut that down. That so. sound like a circus. <laughs> 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 It was, it was yeah. a circus. So yeah, we were we were honest with each other. And yeah. Also with the intro, we tried how many different drum patterns? Probably two or three different times. Oh, and yeah. the song would just end up not having drums. drums off. Yeah. yeah. Tambourine yeah. collapse. That's yeah. it. That's, That's it. it. Tell them like as far as the goal, what we're trying to accomplish with Monteville sonically and just content wise and all of that. Yeah, I mean, you know, and let's rewind for a second. You know, as we say, you know, I kept board to reach about. I guess it's been a year and a half now, and uh, one of the biggest things you know that I was brought here to do um, is, you know, I'm not trying to compete in the bubble. Mm-hmm. Reach is no longer trying to compete in the bubble. It's reach, so we're trying to reach outside the bubble. You know, sonically, I felt that we could take it to another level. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So that's just kind of been my thing since since day one over here. It's just sonically, you know, taking these guys um, or you guys to you know, what I consider to be the next level. And I think we've seen some amazing, you know, growth um, just in the last year and a half. If you really look at the catalog and the music. You'd yeah. say, you know, and I know it's, you know, it's some older stuff that people were attached to when they might have been coming to the faith or whatnot. But if you look at just the reach of where the music is going and how the, the platform has grown, mm-hmm. um, and sonically, if you listen, if you really listen to the music in comparison to sonically where the competition is, you know, mm-hmm. where the, the um, other A list producers or people that have tracks, you gonna, you definitely say, whoa, like this stuff is. It, it's got the sound now, you know right. what I mean? Right. Definitely with me, with going through Minerville, yeah. the goal was content is always, like, at the end of the day, that's a no-brainer. Right. And I think because we believers, like, that's always the goal is to push the boundaries with our content. Yeah. Well, I think what you helped me with with this album was definitely making sure that the music was competitive. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that I could take this, put it right next to a Drake, a Wayne, a Nicki Minaj or Ross album and say for anybody not just Christians because a lot of times Christians were content driven and we overlook the the sonic uh, the sonic things that are going on but I want anyone to be able to sit our CDs side by side and say oh this is competitive yeah. this is just as yeah. good or even better yeah. and that whole process the process of Mindville is just one that I look back on and you know um of course, doing church clothes and gravity mm-hmm. were monumental, you know, because these were kind of my first babies, you know, mm-hmm. coming over here and to see the success of church clothes and mm-hmm. then see the success of gravity was like, you know, you know, those will always have a special, uh, a special spot for me. Mm-hmm. But your project also will have a special spot for me because I remember you coming in initially 
and you were like, you know, um, I don't want to make music for the bubble anymore. I don't want to just satisfy the bubble anymore or make my songs in a format that, you know, traditional Christian hip hop would be like, yeah, that's dope. He was like, man, I want to make my music for the world through my biblical, my biblical lens. You know yeah. what I mean? I want my stuff, you know, and then you were firm on, man, I want to do an album the way I want to do it, not to please, you know, this specific youth group over here or whatever like that. He was like, if that's the case, if I'm going to make music to, you know what I'm saying, satisfy these niches or something, then I might as well not be able to do that. And when you said that, you know, for me it was, okay, let's go with it. Let's yeah. take it there. Yeah, I think, I think if anything, if you were to listen to this album, I'd probably tackle tougher topics mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the sense. And, and I think that because we stuck to the script, and there was times when we sitting in meetings like, dang, what yeah. you what you gonna perform when you go here? Yeah. Yeah. What you gonna like this this may ruin some opportunities yeah. here and yeah. and I guess the cool thing was Torrance always was like, Man, at first when you sat down and talked to me, you said you this is what you do. said you wanted to do. Yeah. This is not lining up exactly with what you're saying you want to do. Yeah. And I think that's a, a testament to all, all artists out here. Like, even if we're just talking about the Christian, you know, Christian rapper, Christian versus rapper type topic. I think the thing is just, man, you have to be true to who God made you to be. Yeah. Like, I think this album is so organic and people saying it's my best work, but it's because I'm true to who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm being myself. I didn't go into this album like, okay, I gotta have my this record. Yeah. I gotta have my youth group record, and then I gotta have my record that's gonna get me on radio. Then I gotta have my record that the streets gonna feel. I just said, I'm just gonna do me, and if the ship sink, well, at least I, I sank the ship being myself. And I think you encourage that in me, and I, I echo that to any artist out there. Like, man, if, if your thing is doing theological, biblical raps, Man, do that to the best of your ability, man. And if you see the success of a Lecrae, if you see the success of a, you know what I'm saying, of, of my record, how I'm approaching it, man, don't try to say, oh, I need to hop over here. Because yeah, nah. it's, be un, it's unnatural. Yeah. But then for the guys also, that's like, man, I like to make more practical music and I like to cover other topics and I, and I like to I like to do diff something different like man be be yourself be honest and, and be real and I think that's where you make the best music you can make so yeah I like that organ, I love it. Yeah, yeah. That's my organ playing skills. It's a sample. <laughs> Welcome to America. Might as well. Make it a better, make it a better, make it a better. With a flashy, the greatest. I must not make no who I am. What I am, what I am. What I am. Came up from the bottom, said hello to Satan before I cracked through the earth's crust. Post up drink. So, I guess get me started with maybe three sounds. And a, and a hook. No, no. And more than three sounds. Oh, you gonna try to play? Then, <laughs> had the organ. I had the. I had organ, a kick, a snare, and a hook. That was it. And the That's sitar true. thing. The sitar just kind of adds a different flavor to it. We we had no idea that he knew how to play sitar. So. Oh, I think sitar is like this. Oh, sorry. In other words, it's a keyboard sitar. <laughs> <laughs> Or oh, Santor. And that's the I think that's the hard part about being an artist producer too, is because it's like I see it all the way at the end of the tunnel. And you have to kind of bring people on board. Like that's what I love about these guys, because they'll they'll be like, all right, well, we'll try anything and delete it if it yeah. doesn't work. <laughs>
So that was dope, though. Yeah, it was just the organ and all of that. I think what brought me into the, what made me like love that song the most was the gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give it's yeah. just melodic, and it, yeah. that's a hook. So it's like something as catchy as that. I felt like we had to do it, but it it was dope because like by the time you got done adding, was I mean it was. You killed the drums, adding more more stuff to the drums. And what else did we add to? Yeah, that synth bass line, mm-hmm. chopped it up. Oh, and then the the thank you, Lord. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> the vocal sample. Yeah. We found a, uh, an old vocal sample that says, thank you, Lord. And we're trying to make it fit. And Derek's like, why don't I just sing it? Yeah. <laughs> and he's over there singing it. And we're like, man, can you sound more uh, James Brown? Yeah. And first take, man. Ooh. I can't either. <laughs> All the samples on the album are really, I think, me. Yeah, this, just tweaking things up. And, this, yeah. and the funny thing is, is, I saw a comment online somewhere, and somebody was like, I I know where that sample came from. I've heard it before. Yeah. Like, no, no, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, did, you didn't hear that sample, so you're wrong, buddy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, that was I think that was really, really fun doing that, just tweaking that. Yeah. Uh, I think we should... Check the session out and go on to it and break it down. For you producers, what we did was we layered the synth. There's a high synth and there's a low synth. I bought a uh, program called East West, which is, it's a a brilliant like the sounds are so organic for this album I wanted to make that I wanted the album to sound really earthy and organic not as synthetic so let the synths like in today's music like synths are the lead of everything you got synthetic drums synthetic everything what I want to do is I wanted the organic stuff to lead the way and let the synths be added yeah added uh, added to it. Oh yeah, we forgot to tell them too, like, pretty much all of the album has distortion on it. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, Sans Amp, this basic Pro Tool distortion is pretty much throughout, throughout the whole joint. Metal, like, is even with this. did this whole beat. I don't know why they even Where's the kick? There is no kick. That is no. That's it. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. There's no there isn't a kick in here. There's just a big time. That's pretty yeah. That's taking the like usually you have a kick, a eight oh eight and a punch kick is just it's a big that's time. time. A big floor time. Yeah. Oh no that you see where it says A Rab kicks? Yeah, well, they're, so, they're, they're on the ones, but they're not stacked. Yeah, they're not, they're not stacked. I think they're just bigger toms, right? Some of it. Oh. Yeah. Thanks. So you got that kick. I think arrangement makes or breaks a song. Yeah. It can make or break it. It can kill it. Or it can make it amazing because I mean that loop that I had at first if that would have been for a few minutes and you don't really notice that yeah, you yeah. don't really notice that it takes the background yeah it just arrangement arrangement is what makes a good song like it's been a pleasure working with these two man because they're, they're they're brilliant minds I just get the opportunity to just a lot of times I get to shine for but man Without these dudes, Minerville doesn't happen. Like, period. No question. So, yeah, man. But, gimme.